Hi and welcome to this second video for the cylindrical projection demo. In this video I'm gonna go over some of the different features on a more practical example and just show it in action a bit. So this is going to be my demo object for the day courtesy of the internet and let's just create the note and have a look at some of the different groups that are available. The node is quite big, but it's actually less daunting than it seems at first sight. So if we just go over some of the different options that are available. So the first part, the first group is the texture map. So anything that relates directly to the color map that you're using, um, or the map that you're using, so image rotation slide. Next one is just the cylinder dimensions, so length, radius, etc. UV size refers to the actual UV size or UV distribution on the cylinder UV coordinates. So UV scale and repeat. And then probably the most important one which is cylinder pivot. And like I explained in the previous video, the pivot you're defining in this group is actually at the uh, center of the cap of the cylinder. So if the red part is the cylindrical projection, the pivot you're defining down here is this point down here. And that's like in a world space uh, XYZ coordinate. And then next is the rotation for the projection, which will rotate around the pivot you defined in the previous group. And some pie clip options like, you know, like pie slice clip type of stuff and some transform helpers and those are just multipliers against some of the more common use uh, sliders up here um, just to get a bit more range out of your sliders so if your scene size is really small uh, or really big you can increase the multiplier to get a bit more range out of the sliders so let's do something concrete and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just have a look at the the barrel and I'm gonna open the cylinder pivot and kind of align my uh, barrel in the center of my paint buffer because as soon as I click on the display object position as color value my screen will go you know I kind of lose the definition of the model and the display object position as color value will do exactly that it will convert the XYZ position of each pixel into an RGB value and these values can be over one so in this case it goes white and the way to sample the position is to use the color picker so you click somewhere where you think the center would be and then in the pixel analyzer you see the values under RGB which correspond to your X, Y and Z coordinates these coordinates only will be accurate when you have HDR active, that is in MARI 2.6, or in previous MARI versions, um, you would go, go to the painting palette, open the paint buffer group, and make sure that the clamp is unticked. And that will allow you to sample values over 1 and below 0. So I'm going to go back to my pixel analyzer and use the position I sampled before and just transfer the values into my X, Y, and Z. And turn off the display object position as color value. I'm going to open up the texture map group and turn on the debug pattern. And you can already see that my projection is kind of aligned where I clicked. I'm just going to offset it a little bit down. Just to be sort of more center. However, we are slightly rotated, or actually a good deal rotated. So I'm going to go to the transform rotate. And by default, the cylindrical projection will be created in a 90 degree angle towards the grid. So I'm just going to set the X rotation to zero and I've already have a aligned projection. 
I'm going to go to the rescale and increase the size a little bit and change the repeat U and V just to make sure that these patterns are actually square so I don't get any stretching in my texture unless I want to that is of course now I'm gonna go to the cylinder dimensions and I want to adjust the length because I just want to isolate the barrel so the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the lock UV scale which will ensure that the UV scale is not changing in relationship to the length so if I were to adjust the length with the uh, lock UV scale off, you can see my previously defined uh, proportion of my UVs is actually changing. However, when I turn on lock UV scale, I can just adjust the length and the radius freely without uh, actually having to readjust every time. And as you can see, I've get, I'm getting quite big jumps here and again my object is quite small. So I'm just going to go to the transform helpers and set my global multiplier quite low. And that will actually multiply against the length as well. So I'm just going to move my length. And now you can see I'm getting a lot more sensible results. And just to fine tune, I'm going to put my cursor into the input numbering field. Hold down my left mouse button and just move the mouse up and down so I can slightly adjust my my position this way and that looks pretty good I'm getting a bit of clipping here onto the muscle which I don't really want and I also need to adjust the radius as you can see I'm getting a lot of spill up here so I'm just gonna turn on the radius and the radius it's important to know, just out of performance reasons, I'm not doing a cylindrical radius clip. So you'll see it's it'll clip squ uh, in a square fashion, and like I said, it's just pure performance reason. So let's say we want to just do this part. And actually, I want to change the clipping of the cylinder as well. So I'm going to go to the pie clip. And the, there's two different clips available. The first one is a uh, plain slice. So that will slice the cylinder along its length. So either from the start or from the end. And the second one is a uh, pie slice. So that will slice the cylinder around its, its radius. So I'm just going to use the plain slice, uh, the plain slice to clip off the end a little bit. Oh, sorry. Actually, I want to clip off the start. And again, you can use the offset sliders just for fine adjustment. They have a slightly different slider range than the main sliders. So it's useful for doing fine tuning. And I'm pretty okay with that. So I'm going to bring in my texture that I'm going to use. And as you can see here, I'm using the very cool image browser that is available on mari.idsk.com, written by Ben Neal. I would highly recommend you download it, it's quite useful. So I'm just going to put my texture in there, turn off the debug pattern, and move the cylindrical projection under my sRGB to linear node, because I work in linear space. I created the projection above the sRGB to linear node, because if I sample my position and I have a, a transformation of my color space active, then I would sample wrong colors, so that's just the only reason. So either turn it off when you sample or create the node above. So you can see we've got a projection going. I'm actually going to stretch the UV slightly. Uh, 
and that's right for now. Now I'm just going to duplicate the node and just put something else in there. You may have noticed that the actual texture map that I dragged in disappeared. It's actually just a bug in Mari where if I close the group and reopen it, you can see the texture is actually still in there. And I'm going to bring in now for the second projection, just bring in some scratches. So. And just screen that on top. And last but not least, let's do another duplication. And I'm going to go back to my debug pattern just because it's easy to view. And I actually want to change the length. Actually, I'm just going to bring in the texture that I want to use. Put it in here. And I'm going to rotate the image 90 degrees. And you can see I'm getting some dirt there. And I'm going to use the slide just to slide the texture in position. And that will just, like I said, like uh, the name suggests, slide the UVs along the Z axis, so along the length of the cylinder. You could use the offset for this as well. However, because the offset is evaluated, uh, so if I just slide it here, you can see it's actually rotating as well. And that is because the translation happens before the rotation. So it's just easier to use the slide just to put it into place. And again, I'm just going to adjust the, the repeat UV a bit. And just put it in position. And now I'm going to use the plain slice clip just to cut it off. Put it on multiply. And, you know, we could duplicate this, or actually, maybe I can get get it to work with one projection in both. This actually might be a bit harder than I thought it would be. It might work, but I wouldn't count on this. Close some groups here. It's probably going to be a lot of adjustments, so it's probably easier to just do it with a separate projection and then bake it down. Yeah, I mean, this is a good case where, you know, the projection is really, really nice and useful and you can just add more stuff to it. So let's group this. And move on to a different part. I actually want to do an extreme case down here on the grip. Of course you could try planner this, but let me just show you what the trap planner would give you. Let's bring in some new textures. So you can see I've already got quite ugly blending effects and even if I set the the fall off to something quite hard then I'm getting still seams here. So it's not really that great. So I'm gonna try and use the cylindrical projection for this case as well and see what we get. 
going to turn on the job planner and create a new cylindrical projection. I'm going to pick my center point sort of. And again, I'm using the paint buffer just as an orientation. So this square of the paint buffer. Turn on the display object position. Click on my center, where I think the center is, and transfer the values. Turn on the debug pattern. And then just set my length really low, so I can see let me just the global multiplier again. So I'm setting my length really low so I see exactly where the Z axis is supposed to be. And then I'll just rotate it into place a bit. And adjust the length. And actually you can see with this case what happened there is I created the cylinder projection and it's facing towards the screen at the moment so this position is actually already the maximum length that I can I can get so in this case if this happens just scroll down to rotation and turn off the flip Z and that will just flip the cylinder around its base and now if I move up you can see the cylinder it's actually moving correctly. And I'm just gonna again adjust the UV scale a little bit. And then just keep on rotating. And again I've got a secondary offset slider that I can use just to align it a bit better. And I can see the end of the cylinder down here. So I'm just going to offset the whole thing down again. Nah. Let's do it manually. And just adjust the length a little bit up. Alright, so you can see the distribution is a bit ugly. Let's see what it looks like when we actually turn on the texture. Put this below the sRGB to linear and decrease the UV scale. So it's a bit, it's not that great in this case. I'm going to use the squash now under the cylinder dimension and the squash command will do exactly that. It will squash the cylinder in one axis. So I can kind of redistribute the features. And together with the repeat I can kind of make it into something. I mean that's not, not bad at all. So let me just make a mask for this. And I'm gonna fill the mask with white. And now we've got a decent seamless grip. And if we compare it against the top planner, it looks like the top planner broke in the meantime. It's just Mari for you sometimes. It just doesn't like it always. Why is it loading black now? Let's try again. Just 
save that thing. Sometimes it just doesn't want to behave. Here we are. It's Mari for you sometimes. Sorry about this. And now it looks like the cylindrical projection is broken as well. Yeah. It's very tedious. Alright. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry about this. It's just demonstration. So this is the Traplanner one. So you can see you have a seam and this is the cylindrical projection where we don't have a seam. So if you can get Mari to actually behave it can be quite useful. And we could just move on a little bit further you know and actually let me get rid of this annoying Traplanner if it doesn't work. on my barrel and you know you could just move on here and take your next projection and just sample the values get rid of mask And you know, it's basically the same procedure as before. It's quite, seem quite big. seem rather massive. Oh actually see exactly what I warned you about happened. I had the sRGB to linear on so I was getting really really high values. So let's try this again without it. And now my values are a bit more in range. It's actually probably a good thing that this happened so you'll remember it. And now we are in line. So I'm just gonna rotate this thing again into place. Let me just reset everything first. There we are. trying to get these lines aligned. It looks like we're quite alright, we're pretty dead center. And adjust the length again. And I'm just gonna use actually let me adjust the radius first. Let's turn on the lock UV scale. Just to repeat, I'm just gonna clip it off again. Actually, clip off the cap as well. just turn on my sRGB linear again and 
And yeah, I mean... So I need to reset my color to, to normal white. So, another cylindrical part kind of done. And actually one thing that might be worth showing is how to apply a stencil. So, let's say we want to apply like just a serial number or something like just this for example. So if you just have a non-repeating thing that you want to apply and in this case I already have something if I were to put it here that I can use from the barrel. So I'm just gonna put the cylindrical projection here as a duplication and then just turn off the length. So if I just put in the texture map, let me just view the layer in itself. And I'll just re reset all the, the clipping that I've done. So I've got my serial number here. I'm going to slightly rotate it around the Z axis of the cylinder. Just to put it into place. I'm going to use the slide to just center it here. And then just clip off using the pie slice end and pie slice start. Use the fine offset. And now you can see I applied a projection just with uh, using the transparency of the embedded texture map already. Obviously you could have painted this in like five seconds, but uh, it's good to just show you what I can do. And yeah, I mean, this pretty much covers all the things that the node uh, can do. And I'm sure you'll find some applications for it. It's definitely, it has its uses. Um, yeah, hope you like it. It's downloadable now at ideascale.com and see you next time.